Auburn is taking over the state of Alabama. In a world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the book, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. Happy Tuesday. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Five, and we're ready to get after it. Talk about these this big recruiting uh, day uh, yesterday, That this an extension of the weekend and, and how Auburn is starting to take over. It uh, may not even be starting. It may be right in the middle of taking over the state of Alabama and why uh, that matters. But before we get started, you know we got to give a shout-out to our boy Ford Stokes with retirement results presented by Active Wealth. If you want to take over your retirement, if you want to take over your save your savings and make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, uh, check him out. Check Ford out, retirementresults.com forward slash pen. He'll put together a custom uh, portfolio analysis for you uh, and get you on the right track. He's an Auburn fan. I know he was fired up about this weekend, uh, and uh, he's texting me all weekend about the different recruits. So you've got a connection there, make a friend at the same time, and also uh, get yourself in order. Get your stuff in order. Ford's the guy for that. So check him out, Retirement Results, presented by Active Wealth. Uh, show him some love. Tell him I sent you. Auburn continues the heater, man. Auburn is on an absolute recruiting heater right now, uh, and it doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime soon. Uh, You pick up two big in-state commitments, two big top 100 commitments yesterday with Derek Smith and Quan Fagans, and I think it's time to say it. I think it's time. It's it's okay to say it. As of right now, it seems like Hugh Freeze and Auburn are taking over uh, the state of Alabama. Hugh has made a, an absolute. Uh, he has made it a. a uh, he has made it a point. He has made it a point to get in high schools as many times as he possibly can in the state. Make Alabama a priority. The state of Alabama a priority, and you're seeing the dividends pay off uh, already. You're seeing the dividends pay off already. Look, you go back to when Hugh got here. He was only. He came in here in his little half class, and. The best thing he could, the best he could do with the resources he had at the time, and the time that he had at the time, uh, was to flip Keldrick Falk, who I think, depending on which site you look at, believe it or not, uh, was somewhere around like a top five to seven player in the state of Alabama, and that's the only one that uh, he was able to get. Understandably so. Uh, it turns out he could be possibly one of the best uh, in the class, regardless, but. That was one of the deeper classes that's probably ever been been in the state of Alabama for Keldrick Falk to be, uh, you know, on the in the top half of the top ten uh, of players. You shift gears, you move on to twenty twenty three, uh, twenty twenty four, and you sort of have the building blocks cemented for what could possibly take place in the future in the state of Alabama by flipping uh, Perry Thompson, flipping uh, Demarcus Riddick landing the number one player uh, in the state of Alabama uh, in Cam Coleman. And I think you end up with having somewhere between which sites you look at four or five uh, of the top ten. The thing was, uh, I f- Alabama that it had not been having – Alabama had started to have been chipped away too from other schools. Like there was – Clemson would come in and pick off one. Ohio State was dipping down into Alabama and and picking off some. So it's not just Alabama that you're having to fight off. You're having to fight off other schools too. Fast forward to 2025 and currently, just currently, depending on, again, depending on which site you look at right now for this exercise, I'm looking at 247. uh, Auburn has committed uh, seven uh, of the top ten players uh, in the state of Alabama. You have the uh, hopefully the eighth that's set to commit on Saturday uh, in Jared Smith, so which would give you eight out of the top ten, uh, and the other two uh, are committed to not Alabama to Ohio State, not Alabama. Uh, unprecedented territory that that Auburn's entering uh, as far as the state of state of Alabama. And here's the thing about the top ten of the state of Alabama this year. Uh, according to 247 Sports, every single one of them are a top 100 player. 
So you have to have top 100. You, when you stack top 100 players, when you can start stacking multiple top 100 players, you can really, really make some noise. So if Auburn were to get a shot to flip, uh, I think Auburn's got a really good shot to flip Naheem Offord if they stay in it, have a pretty good season, keep chipping away. That could give you nine out of ten. Uh, Auburn's still going to push, make a run at Zion Grady. I'm sorry, not Zion Grady. They're still going to make a push at Herbert Scroggins, who's from Savannah, Georgia. They're their number one edge target that committed to Miami. But if things go south there and you feel like that door's closed, you may be able to shift your uh, attention to Zion Grady, uh, who's committed to Ohio State, who's the number six player in the in the state of Alabama. Uh, and then if you if you're able to flip him, that would give you uh, all ten. Uh, <laughs> of the top 10 in the state of Alabama, all top 100 players. Very deep class this year in the state of Alabama, and Auburn's making noise. Then you shift over to 2026. You've already got three out of the top 10 committed. Uh, they committed over the weekend, uh, and you had the rest of the top eight. Uh, the, the remainder that were basically all the, all the remainder were visiting Auburn this weekend, watching those kids commit. Uh, so it's it's big. It seems like you're starting to see sort of a power shift, um, even with, you know, I know Alabama's got a new staff, but hey, this is the first full year of recruiting that they're going to have. Now, they've only been here for a short period of time, but you're not, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work early. You got to put in the, you know, Perry Thompson was flipped in July uh, of Hughes' first year. Mark, Demarcus Riddick was flipped in July of, of Hughes' first year here. So it's not like you can just lean on, Hey, they need more time. They need more time. Hugh came in and he was getting after it and flipping Alabama kids against Saban, uh, against Saban and his staff who who'd been here forever. He was flipping those kids uh, in his first little his first full recruiting class. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But it's I'm so excited to see an Auburn coach do what what Hugh is doing, and, and I'll tell you why. And this is why Alabama matters. Okay. When Tommy Tuberville was here, I, I know everybody loves Tommy Tuberville. We had the the six in a row. You, you had the undefeated season, and all that was great. And and I, and I appreciate it, and I and, and I love it too as well. But that happened during a time when Alabama was in constant turmoil. Okay, there were there was a lot of coaching turnover. There was probation. There was bowl uh, where they couldn't go play bowl games, things like that, and that opened the door a lot for. You know, the ability for for Tommy and staff to be able to sort of put their foot on the throat of Alabama as far as in-state goes. And they didn't do it. They didn't really do it. They they kind of sort of rode the rode the wave uh of hey, we're here now, and, and this is just the way it is. You know, we're we're here now. Auburn's Auburn's on top. This is always it's always gonna be. We don't necessarily have to keep grinding because uh this just kind of is who it is. And it all it took was Nick Saban coming in, and in his very first recruiting class, he completely erased everything that that <laughs> everything. Unfortunately, that that staff built, he erased in one recruiting year. It, he Saban made it a point to take kids uh, in the state of in that top ten in the state of Alabama. Honestly, that probably were not really uh, ever really going to pan out. Uh, just because they're in the top 10 doesn't necessarily mean they're great. Okay. They, Alabama has deep years. Alabama has lean years, just or the state of Alabama has deep years and lean years, just like every other state. But he made it a point to shut the state out. Uh, he made it a point to come in and, and take, take everybody so that there was no local, you know, you, you, you sort of take your local top end talent and it makes you have to spend more resources to go out uh, and and pick off others. So, and it's been that way really for about 15 years. Like we've had some, we've gotten some top players. Yeah, we've gotten some top players out of the state, but to be able to line up and just say, we're going to go get the best, we're going to go get the best eight players out of the state of Alabama every single year. If, if they're SEC players, we're, we're going to go get them. And to be able to do that this year and then hopefully stack it and do it again next year, I think that makes life harder for, uh, a lot of folks uh, in the SEC. It makes a lot of uh, life harder for you know your your rival Alabama. It makes life harder for for Georgia, Clemson. You know Clemson that likes to come down and pick off some kids uh, in, in the state of Alabama. Even 
you know, I mean, Ohio State, it depends on it depends on how these last two recruitments go. But uh, if you could flip Naeem Alford and shut out um, Zion Grady, now you take away a, a little outlet for Ohio State to come in uh, and pick up. And, and the big thing is, I don't care. So if, if you hear people trying to cope and say, oh, it's just it doesn't matter. We recruit nationally or blah, 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 whatever. The thing is, OK, if you come from California to Alabama and you want to use your prior relationships to be able to bring in some kids that you already had relationships with that you've been recruiting, that's fine for like year one, okay, year two. But here's the thing. You can't continually recruit those schools. You, you just don't have the time to be able to be there like you need to be. And the thing is, you know what? All the other schools out there do. So when you're only able to be out there uh, a few times, they're able to be out there every single day if they want to. So eventually – those relationships can only take you so far. So it's not like you're just going to be able to pick off kids from California every single year. It's not like you can just go off and rely on, I'm going to get kids from outside of your recruiting territory. No, you have to be able to, on a Friday night, you got to be able to go see two or three football games. You got to go, and you can do that if you draw that 100, 200 mile radius around, uh, around your campus and then just hit the road and get after it, you can do that on a Friday night. You can make a huge impact. You can go see – you've seen Kirby do it in the helicopter. <laughs> you've seen Kirby land, uh, land uh, you know, on a baseball field, go check out, a, a you know, a couple of quarters of a game, make an appearance, go hit the helicopter and go see, you know, two or three uh, other high school football games uh, in, a, in a night. You can't do that if you're recruiting, if you're if you're not trying to, if you're not trying to build the relationships and you're not trying to dominate in your recruiting territory. It's 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 a big deal. So I don't I don't care what any type of cope that you want to you want to go with. It's a big deal to be able to not be able to uh, sort of uh, it's a big deal to not be able to have a lot of success in your recruiting footprint footprint. No matter if you do have, uh, you get a couple five stars, your first class from from California or, or or wherever, Georgia's going to recruit Georgia, and Georgia's going to recruit Georgia extremely hard, and it's going to be hard to get kids uh, out of Georgia. Alabama is going, I mean Auburn is going to recruit Alabama hard. I, I assume eventually Alabama is going to recruit uh, Alabama hard, but you're already sort of you 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 went up against Saban and and, and had some big victories. Now, I don't care what anybody says, that there's no way the new staff can recruit at that level. So now you've sort of already built the foundation. If you solidify and you make it tough, it's going to make life tough for, for the, you know, the staff across the state. It's going to make life a, a lot tougher uh, to not be able to um, you know, have as much success in state as they're used to having. As they're as they're used to having, so it's a big deal. It's an abs. It's a huge deal. It's a, vi a big foreshadowing deal. And if the if you can marry the results on the field, if you can marry the results on the field, this first this this next season, if you can have a a, a good season, if you can have some success to where it looks like you're making progress, it's going to cement the idea that this thing's moving in the right direction, and it's just going to make. It easier to continue to pull these guys from in state. It's going to make it easier to continue to build these relationships with this coaching staff. You, the high school coaches are going to be able to trust you. You know, you're building all this rapport, and, and and they're sending you their kids. Hey, they're actually going and they're they're doing what they're saying they're going to do. I trust I, I trust this staff. I trust this guy. He he's doing what he's he's practicing what he's preaching. He's doing what he's saying he's going to do. Uh, I think that's just going to make life a lot tougher for for opposing schools because Hugh Freeze is building the wall around Alabama and he's picking off the kids from schools in, in areas that historically, I say historically, I'm just going to over the last you know, 14, 15 years, Auburn has struggled at. It's just struggled. Auburn struggled in the Birmingham area. Auburn has struggled in uh, Mobile. Uh, Period. That's there's just no there's no ifs ands buts about it that they have struggled in those areas. Auburn struggled in Phoenix City, you know, right up the road. And and you pick off you, you get Cam Coleman this past year. Uh, I think there the foundation has kind of been set there that when when they have those top kids that come through, Auburn's got a chance 
uh, to pick them off. It matters. Recruiting in state matters. This isn't just some grasp on to some idea to trump it because you want to bug or you want to try to have some sort of ammo to go back and forth at somebody. No, this matters. And no matter what anybody says, the people that know, the people that understand recruiting know that this matters. The people that know how this whole thing works, the college football works, they understand that this matters. So Auburn's going to continue to hopefully rack up, uh, continue the streak this weekend with with Jared uh, Jared Smith, and then they're going to continue to chip away at uh, they're going to continue to chip away at Naeem Offord. Um, I still I still uh, you know I still go back to what Hugh said, uh, you know whether it was meant to be heard or not when he said. Uh, you know, I'm not going to miss out on this kid. You look at what he did with Alvin Henderson. You look at what he did with Derek Smith. You look at what he did uh, with all these uh, – Antonio Coleman, even after he basically, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, flip-flopped, uh, flip-flop, flip-flopped, I guess, uh, continue to stay on him, and he continues to work and work on them and, and find ways – uh, to chip chip away and chip into that lead uh, of where they currently are. Hugh just seems to just be relentless, relentless uh, and find a way. And I don't want to give uh, any uh, – I don't want to not give enough credit to the staff around him because, boy, he has put together a monster recruiting staff, especially for the state of Alabama. Uh, and it's uh, it, it's really hard to see. The only thing I feel like that could derail it is if you just have a poor season. If you just – if you follow up last year with another poor – uh, offensive output, I think you could see some issues. Defense is going to be fine, but those, even defensive kids want to go play for a winner. So uh, if if that, that's pretty much the only thing that I see derailing this train right now. Uh, it, it's, it seems like Auburn has got some big-time momentum, uh, especially in state. And, and, again, I don't see it slowing down. 2026 could be an even – it's hard to imagine that – uh, if you get all, if you were to somehow get all top ten in the state of Alabama, that twenty twenty six could be better. But I think there could be some higher top end talent uh, in the state next year uh, that Auburn could pick off uh, multiple, uh, many out of the top ten, and and I think there's a chance that some, there could be multiple five stars in that class versus just Naeem Offered uh, in this class. But again, don't want to throw, don't don't want to turn my nose up at this class, this this year's class. All top 100 players, all very good players, and Auburn's got a good chance to sweep it. Auburn's got a really good chance uh, to sweep it. So you just got to keep after it uh, and, and keep pushing. So last thing I want to talk about: some <laughs> I've heard some people talk about this weekend, okay, and uh, that it's underwhelming, or uh, I'm not as hype as I as I feel like I should be, uh, and I. <laughs> I think I've kind of figured out what the issue is. Okay, um, surprise. The the element of surprise is big as far as uh, creating hype in your mind. Okay, if if you're not expecting something and something big happens, it makes that event seem more significant. Okay, so the the problem is, and and I say problem in quotation marks. The problem is a lot of these kids that are that are committing to Auburn. It's not huge surprises. They aren't huge surprises, but they're still incredible players. And Quan Fagans, we should be shooting fireworks right now from the top of buildings for landing this kid. <laughs> okay, a Thompson top fifty-ish uh, player uh, is something that Auburn just doesn't get. Auburn does not get kids like that from Birmingham. OK, they just people call Birmingham Bammerham for a reason. OK, Auburn does not get kids like this from Birmingham. And he has a a, a ceremony last night. And I kind of feel like it's just like ho-hum. Uh, we were expecting that he's he, he should have he's been on the list for a while. It's just it's, it's no big deal now. We've had him for a while and, and, and you just don't. <laughs> I think we've got to figure out that surprise, it, it typically does help the hype, but it shouldn't equal hype, okay? They should, we should be fired up about this kid uh, more so than just about anybody. And then the same thing, you know, Derek Smith was, a, I, I say, a little bit of surprise, but Derek Smith was one that we all thought he would flip on Saturday. He kind of waited, and then he finally does flip, and it's like, okay, well, I was excited then. How do I feel now? I, I I just want to. I just want everybody to understand. You have to really take back and look at the perspective of what's going on, and understand that we, Auburn is getting 
dudes, okay? All, all of these guys are top 100 guys that have been popping off in the 2026 class and the 2025 class. Like, you're talking some of the best players in the country, uh, regardless of the fact that they've been sort of, what if you want to call it a silent commit or a, a heavy Auburn lean, and, and you don't really feel super threatened. When they finally pop, man, we got to go scream it from the rooftops. We got to go uh, get get wild, happy uh, about stuff like this because Auburn typically, you know, historically, I know the the narrative is changing now, uh, but Auburn doesn't typically get kids like this. So don't let the the lack of surprise uh, damper how important or how much of an impact uh landing a kid like Anquan Fagans uh flipping a kid like Derek Smith actually is because it's massive it's massive for the state of Alabama it's massive for just in general getting another great player to add to the roster it's just big for it's big for everything and you you're seeing the national folks the national folks are sometimes uh, right now seem like they're more hype than Auburn is about about a lot of this uh, when I say Auburn I'm talking about some Auburn fans, Auburn media, things like that. Like th there, there are some national analysts that are going nuts right now uh, over. I can't believe what's going on at Auburn. Like this just doesn't happen. Like the, this many commits and, and, and short this short of time and and to be this caliber of athlete. Don't let the don't let the lack of surprise uh, damper your hype, damper your uh, your mood because it, it, it's still a, it's still a huge deal, and you still it still should be something that should be uh, celebrated. So. I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Uh, all, football season is coming up. Camp's right around the corner, and Auburn is literally closing in on getting really close to having their 2025 class already sort of set in stone. And, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty spectacular. You can kind of switch gears uh, and focus on the season. So let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I still think you got several commits on the horizon. Possibly some really, really big ones. Uh, you got a big one this Saturday, and, and who knows what happens uh, after that. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. We went live on Sunday night. Make sure you hit that alert bell so that you're you're uh, you know alerted whenever we do go live, whenever we do uh, pop off and have have something uh, outside of the norm. So, again, I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. This is another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Stay daggum buttoned. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.